Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chen Yanquan, a PhD student from Imperial College London. Today, I would like to share my study about design of tapered steel eye section members by advanced elastic analysis with string limits. Next, I'll introduce my study from these six parts. First, let's start by talking about the background. Taper members are commonly used in steel construction to enhance structure efficiency. In the traditional design method for steel structures, due to high computational efficiency, beam finite element models are typically used to carry out a structure analysis, which can directly capture global member behavior, but cannot capture local buckling behavior. Hence, the concept of cross-section classification is typically used to consider the cross-section instability. However, as shown in the right figure, this approach does not allow for string hardening, partial plasticity in cluster cross-sections, and also generates artificial steps in the determination of capacity. To overcome these drawbacks, recently, a more consistent design method has been developed, which involves advanced elastic analysis, string limits, and string averaging approach. This method has been verified on prismatic members but has not covered the taper members. So the objective of this study is to extend this design method to also cover implant web tapered eye section members. Then let's talk about the application of the proposed design method for tapered members. This design method mainly includes these three parts. The first part is about advanced elastic analysis. That is using beam finite element models to perform geometrically and materially nonlinear analysis with imperfections, which is also referred to as JMNIA. As shown in this figure, web taper members are modeled as stepped members with a number of prismatic segments. Through the advanced elastic analysis, the global member behavior can be directly captured, so the individual process for member check is not required. Then let's move on to the second part, CSM strain limits. What is CSM? The continuous strength method CSM is a deformation-based approach to structure design. CSM has two key features. First is an appropriate material model, as shown in the left figure. The code linear stress strain model for hot rolled steel, which allows for strain hardening and has been shown to provide accurate stress strain response. The second key feature is the CSM base curve, as shown in the right figure. It defines a continuous relationship between the cross section slenderness and the maximum string that a cross section can experience prior to its failure. For example, stocky and slender cross sections have different deformation capacities, thus, they can reach different maximum strings at failure. Hence, by applying the CSM string limit to the maximum compressive string, within cross-sections. This method can be used to determine cross-sections ultimate state. And correspondingly, the local buckling effects are taken account of. The third part of the proposed design method is string averaging approach. The local stability of the cross-section can be enhanced by the presence of a string gradient. For example, as shown in the left top two figures, a cantilever, Due to the string gradient and the finite length of local buckling, the maximum moment along the length is higher than the typical design moment. To account for this beneficial effect in the proposed design method, as shown in the right bottom figure, which shows the string distribution along the length of the above tapered member. When we use the aforementioned CSM string limit to determine the ultimate state of each cross section along the member length, the string checked against corresponding CSM string limit is not the maximum string of one cross section, but is the average string over local buckling half wavelength of that cross section. So now we have known the first three steps during the application of the proposed design method. Perform advanced elastic analysis, calculate CSM string limit for each beam element, calculate local buckling half wavelength and average string for each beam element, and the final step is to find the load increment during GMNIA, at which the average string at any cross sections attains the corresponding CSM string limit, and also find the load increment at which the peak load factor is reached. 
Which one error occurs first defines the failure mode and the ultimate member capacity. Now let's see a worked example. The right figure presents the normalized bending moment versus normalized average strain at the critical location of a tapered member under uniform bending. In the corresponding shell FE model, which was used as a benchmark here, the failure was caused by the occurrence of local buckling at the critical location. The corresponding ultimate bending, uh, bending moment is represented by the green dash line. Now let's see the beam FA model, the black curve. Since beam FA model cannot capture local buckling, no peak load factor was reached, and the end bending moment continuously increased, resulting in unsafe prediction. However, if we apply CSM string limit to average compressive string at the critical location, look at the blue dash line. The failure point, the red point, can be accurately predicted, and also uh, the corresponding prediction is accurate and safe, only 5% lower than the benchmark shell FE result. Okay. In this study, because shell FE models can directly take account of the inst instability and plasticity effects that adversely influence member resistances, they are used as benchmarks to evaluate the accuracy of the proposed design method. So first, we need to validate the shell FE modeling against experiments collected from literature. The, the left figure shows the local imperfections introduced into the shell FE models. And the right figure uh, shows, the, uh, shows a validation example. It can be seen that the load deformation path obtained from the shell FE model closely follows the corresponding experimentally determined path. And the, the prediction is also very close to the test result. Hence, the developed shell FE models can be used to generate benchmark data. Now let's move on to the results obtained from the uh, proposed design method. First, it's about uh, the loading condition of pure compression and pure uniform bending. These two figures show uh, the ratios of ultimate resistance predictions obtained from the proposed design method, the black points, and those determined according to Eurocode, the red points to benchmark shell FE results versus taper ratios ranging from one to five. The black and red dash lines represent average values. It can be seen that the proposed design method provides more accurate predictions than the traditional design method, especially for members with larger taper ratios. How about taper members under combined compression and uniform bending as shown in the left figure? involving bending moment and extra force interaction. The right figure uh, presents the frequency distributions of ratios of the ultimate resistances predicted by the proposed design method and the Eurocode to benchmark shell FE results. It can be seen that the proposed design method provides more accurate and reliable predictions. In terms of taper members subject to non-uniform loading, as shown in these four figures, considering different shapes of bending moment diagrams along the member length. The proposed design method still provides more accurate predictions. In conclusion, the proposed design method is applicable to taper members, subject to uniform and non-uniform loadings, owing to overcoming the limitations of traditional design methods, and also considering the beneficial effect from string gradient. The proposed design method can consistently provide more accurate and the reliable ultimate strength prediction. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chen Yan. Uh, very interesting presentation and um, you know, very, very, in, very in-depth understanding uh, you've shown there. Um, I uh, would like. To uh, to ask a question, which is in terms of these design methods, and you probably see my my design engineering background coming through. Um, but where do we need to go from taking these design methods forward to something which uh, you know, engineers can um, you know, make use of when they are designing structures uh, in the in industry? Mm, okay, um, do you mean that how to uh, apply? Uh, my proposed design method in industry. Yeah, I mean, is it do we need to sort of wait for it to come through the codes in several years' time? Is there, you know, okay. certain little bits of research that you could do that then mean you can kind of get to a a sort of practical design guide? You know, just what, what's the sort okay. of okay. 
Okay, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, this design method is very straightforward and uh, easy to operate. And the underlying concept is also very straightforward. And what we need to do is that first is to uh, perform advanced inelastic analysis using beam finite element models uh, using the package like Abacurs. And uh, then uh, during the jam uh, during the analysis, we can extract uh, uh, the normal string of each cross section from Abacurs and then compare this string against the CSM string limit and then define the failure mode, uh, CSM string limit and uh, the peak load factor, which one is reached first. We will de define the failure mode and the ultimate member capacity. And yes, uh, in the procedure for the application of, the, of this proposed design method, we need to utilize some numerical methods uh, like MATLAB or Python. And also, uh, as far as I know, uh, someone on our team has been trying to develop some numerical tools to make this design process easy and convenient for designers. Try to develop a package like Abacurs or even CUFSM. And uh, yeah. Thank you. I think some you know, numerical tools uh, for applications sound, sounds very yeah. interesting. I'm going to go to uh, Matt, um, my fellow judge, who has a has a question to ask. I mean, you you actually asked the question I was going to ask, but I've got, um, I can ask another quick question. I mean, I, I know you haven't explicitly talked about it, or at least I did, if, if you did, I, I had a bit of an issue with my sound, so I lost you for a few minutes. But is there, do you have any intention on doing physical validation of, of these results to to test um you know, to, to, to kind of validate the numerical methods? Uh, okay. Uh, first, in this study, I used uh, the results obtained from the benchmark shell FE results uh, uh, to evaluate the accuracy of the proposed design method. So for shell FE modeling, uh, I uh, conducted the validation study against experiment uh, yeah, against uh, 18 tapered, tapered member experiments collected from literature. And uh, for the results obtained from my proposed design method, um, I compared uh, uh, the results obtained from the proposed design method against the benchmark shell FE results, and also uh, extensively to compare the re uh, some results against the experiment, uh, the ex experiment results. Uh, which were used to to validate share FE models. I also compared uh, uh, the results obtained from the proposed design method against uh, some experimental results. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you. It's going to go to Eleni now, who has a question. Uh, hi, uh, my question is: um, You showed in one of your slides uh, a steel frame, so. Could you, with your method model, uh, also uh, uh, simulate geometrical imperfections, like global uh, imperfections, second order effects? Uh, yes, uh, in beam FA models, because uh, introducing residual stress into beam FA models is some work uh, impractical. So for beam FA models, I introduced uh, uh, equivalent imperfections, which can consider both the global imperfection and the residual uh, stresses. And for shell FE models, we can uh, consider uh, the local buckling facts. So I introduced global imperfe imperfections, local imperfections, and also residual stresses into shell FE models. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And just about the time to squeeze in a, a last question from Dennis. Uh, hi, um, just want to know some of the practical side of your research. Is tapered member uh, really, you know, beneficial by compared to the traditional uh, universal session? Okay, and uh, so. Uh... Because uh, in steel construction, the tapered members are typically used in steel construction to uh, enhance the structure efficiency. For example, in uh, in the steel portal frames, to uh, 
in the, the haunt regions or the uh, or in the apex regions to resist more uh, uh, more uh, re uh, to resist uh, uh, more capacity. Yeah. So uh, uh, compared to the prismatic members, uh, we can use the tapered members uh, in the steel structures. I, I think but currently, have... what we do are using welded, you know, plate onto a parallel session rather than a, a full tapered session. Yeah, uh, generally we we, we uh, generally use uh, prisma prismatic members, but I mean. Um, in some specific regions, such as the uh, haunt regions in uh, portal frames, um, we need uh, we need the tapered members. Um, some somewhere with a larger cross section to enhance the structure efficiency. So my objective is to investigate uh, these, these tapered members. <laughs> 